So we finally know who's going to headline that big Saudi Arabia card in June. It is going to be Hamzat Chemaev versus Robert Whitaker for the number one contender spot. So the winner of this fight will face the winner between Izzy and Drakus, and it is five rounds. The first five round fight of Hamzat's career, which is interesting because we have seen Hamzat slow down before. He slowed down in the Kamaru Usman fight, although he did break his hand, which definitely played a big factor in why his overall act activity decreased and although Hamzat doesn't have great cardio I don't agree with the notion that he has bad cardio look at that pace he went in the Gilbert Burns fight even though Hamzat definitely slowed down the pace which they were going they were throwing everything into their punches but what really doesn't help Hamzat's cardio is that in every single one of his fights he sprints out immediately in the first round gives it everything he has trying to finish his opponents and he does this in every single fight and he does get that first round finish sometimes like against Kevin Holland or Gerald Mearshart, but if he doesn't get that finish, his output drastically decreases, like in the Kamaru Usman fight. Look at the difference in pace between the first round and the second and third rounds from Hamzat, even though breaking his hand definitely played a factor in that. Same thing with the Gilbert Burns fight. Look at the difference in output between the first round and the second round. So I think Hamzat going out there and giving everything he has in the first round isn't the best idea, but again, even if he does pace himself, Whitaker is still going to have the cardio advantage, and he's going to know how to pace himself better. Whitaker has gone five rounds many times whereas this is Hamzad's first five round fight as I said and Whitaker is so well rounded on the feet he definitely has a massive advantage now Hamzad's not a terrible striker he's very fast very powerful can knock you out with one punch and his power definitely translates to middleweight look at the way he knocked Gerald Mearshart out who is a huge guy and that's a little worrying because Robert Whitaker does not have a great chin he's also not the hardest guy to hit and he has a big weakness to that southpaw jab we saw Jared Cannonier use it very effectively we saw Drakus drop him with a southpaw jab and Hamzat can fight very well to both stances and Hamzat himself has a very good southpaw jab we saw him use it against Gilbert Burns drop Gilbert Burns with a southpaw jab so Hamzat could implement a similar strategy to what Drakus did those same stance leg kicks are also going to be there for Hamzat Hamzat has very good very powerful leg kicks and we saw Paulo Costa use leg kicks against Robert Whitaker very effectively but overall Whitaker is definitely going to have the advantage on the feet as I said there's some things Hamzat can go to like that southpaw jab but Hamzat's inexperience as a striker still shows where he throws weird looping shots from awkward angles and Whitaker is just so much more technical that jab from Whitaker is going to land all day Hamzat does not move his head at all he keeps his head straight on the center line so the one twos the jabs the crosses are all going to be there the leg kicks are going to be there on Hamzat Hamzat does not check leg kicks and we saw Whitaker use more leg kicks against Paulo Costa and if Hamzat does switch into that southpaw stance that opens up the head kicks for Robert Whitaker and Whitaker has amazing head kicks even though Whitaker doesn't have a ton of power his speed makes up for it now off the blitz it could get a little scary because when Whitaker blitzes in he is very defenseless he could get caught with an uppercut a right cross but we know Hamzat's main game plan is going to be the wrestling but can he take down Robert Whitaker because historically Whitaker has some of the best takedown defense of all time he was able to stuff a lot of Yoel Romero shots who is an Olympic level wrestler and even if Yoel did get him down he wasn't able to control Whitaker on the ground Whitaker was always able to work his way back up but Hamzat has a very different style of wrestling than what Whitaker's used to Hamzat is so fast with his takedowns his ability to transition on the feet into a takedown shot and get so deep on it before his opponent even sees the attempt is insane look at how fast his shots were against Kevin Holland or Kamaru Usman who is an amazing wrestler has amazing takedown defense defense. He's also so strong. We saw him pick Li Jingliang up, drag him across the octagon, and dump him down. We also saw him just drag Gilbert Burns across the octagon, but the thing is, those guys are a lot smaller than him. Whitaker is the first real middleweight he's ever fought, and really the first time Hamzat's been the smaller guy. Now, he did fight Gerald Mearshart, but Mearshart isn't near the level of Robert Whitaker. Hamzat's chain wrestling is going to be key here for him because taking Robert Whitaker down from range is going to be very hard. Whitaker has a very good sprawl and his overall takedown defense is just very good now we did see him get taken down against Drickus, but the way Drickus took him down is very different from the way Hamzat gets most of his takedowns the way Drickus was able to take Whitaker down was by tripping him out in the clinch instead of with a traditional double or single leg but what Hamzat could do is he can shoot in a double leg from range or a single leg just create contact and then chain wrestle he can rise up into the clinch look for trips there the wrestling pace
least in the chain wrestling Hamzat's going to use against Robert Whittaker is very different from anything he's ever seen against those older wrestlers and grapplers like Yoel and Jacare. Now a place where Hamzat could get a lot of his takedowns is off Robert Whittaker's blitz. Like I said before, Whittaker likes to blitz in, close the distance, but when he blitzes in, he leaves himself very exposed, very defenseless, and Hamzat could shoot in for a takedown, time the blitz, while Whittaker looks to land to the body. If Hamzat can time the blitz, I can absolutely see him getting Whittaker down, but the thing is, against Yoel Romero, Romero was able to get very deep on takedowns, and Whittaker was still able to defend them. And even if Whittaker gets taken down, he's so quick to scramble up, but when he does scramble, he does like to give up his back to get up, which Hamzat will absolutely take advantage of. Hamzat is so quick to get your back, so quick to slide his hooks in, attempt chokes. He did the same thing against Kamaru Usman, and if he does get Whittaker down and Whittaker looks to turtle to get up, Hamzat can slide his hooks in, get his back, and attempt submissions, or potentially try and roll for a Darce, depending on what position he's in. We know Hamzat loves that Darce choke. It's his best submission. And the thing is, with Robert Whittaker on the ground, he can get controlled. If Hamzat is able to establish some sort of position, he can absolutely control Whittaker on the ground. We saw Drickus, after he took Whittaker down, was able to transition straight into mount with little resistance, and then from mount, he was able to control Whittaker on the ground. Now, Hamzat, although he's not going to be as big and strong as Drickus on top, he arguably does have better control, so if Hamza is able to get Whitaker down and is able to establish some sort of top control, I can see him absolutely controlling Whitaker on the ground, landing big ground and pound shots, big elbows and hammer fists. We know Hamza is very tenacious with his ground and pound, and we saw Drakus use ground and pound very effectively against Whitaker. He can also use that ground and pound to look for submission, sort of soften Whitaker up, and anytime Whitaker gives up any sort of submission or position, Hamza is going to attack it immediately. I think Hamza has to capitalize off of Whitaker's blitz. That is where Whitaker is his most vulnerable as he blitzes in behind his jab, looks for the body, looks upstairs to the head. He leaves himself very defenseless. And if Hamzat can time it, he can time a takedown. He can time an overhand, an uppercut. He's so ridiculously fast with his takedowns. I could see him timing that blitz, getting deep in on a double leg, taking Whitaker down, immediately looking to transition into side control or mount. And then from there, landing big ground and pound shots or or I could see him timing an uppercut, sort of like he did against Ikram Alaskarov or a big overhand, and Hamzat has ridiculous power. He can knock anyone out with one punch, and Whitaker is very chinny, but as an early prediction, I think you have to lean with Robert Whitaker. Let me check the odds on that, actually. So Hamzat is actually the favorite. Wow. I just think Whitaker is the overall more skilled fighter. He is more well-rounded. On the feet, he is so much more technical, and Hamzat's striking defense is not very good. He doesn't move his head at all. That jab, the one-twos from Whitaker, the combinations from Whitaker, the way he's going to mix in his high kicks, especially if Hamzat switches into southpaw. And I think he'll be able to defend a lot of the takedowns, especially as the fight wears on into the later rounds, the third, fourth, fifth rounds. I think Whitaker will begin to take over. And even if Hamzat does get Whitaker to the ground, I think he's going to have a really hard time finishing him. Although Whitaker in his last few fights has looked slower and older, I just think on paper, he's probably Hamzat's hardest fight. And I think for the time being, you have to stick with Robert Whitaker. But that wasn't the only fight announced for this Saudi card, Sergei Pavlovich versus Alexander Volkov was announced as the co-main. That is an amazing fight. They also announced Kelvin Gastelum versus Daniel Rodriguez, Johnny Walker versus Volkan Uzdemir, Nasat Hakaras versus Jared Gordon. Those are all pretty good fights. And then there is also Shara Magomedov. He's back against Ihor Putiera. That is a very favorable fight for him, but this card overall is very good, especially for a fight night. Most of the fight nights recently have not been very good, but this one looks amazing. I'm very excited for I'm gonna cover all the fights when they happen, so subscribe so you don't miss that. Like the video if you did enjoy, leave your early prediction in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.